Hey guys, it's Elise and welcome back to My Cupcake Addiction. Today we're going to be combining two delicious things, strawberry shortcake and cheesecake to make the ultimate fresh, light strawberry shortcake, no bake cheesecake. The things you're going to need to make your cheesecake, I'm starting with some shortbread biscuits. So these are buttery and delicious store-bought shortbread biscuits. They're going to make the shortcake portion of our strawberry shortcake cheesecake. I've got some whipping cream, some softened cream cheese, and I've got a packet of strawberry either jelly or jello crystals, some fresh, red, ripe and delicious strawberries, of course. I'm making mine today in a 10 inch wide by about two, two and a quarter inch high removable base tart pan. I've also got some butter, which I'm going to melt and some white chocolate. I'll leave all of your quantities and conversions on the mycupcakeaddiction.com website. So check that out if you want to print this recipe off and if you're going to recreate this delicious recipe at home. So the first thing you want to do is we're going to melt our butter. I'm just going to pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds and just keep melting that until it's completely done. So while that one's melting, I'm going to take my food processor, my mini food processor, and just blend up my shortbread cookies. I want these super nice and fine crumb. So if you don't have a food processor, you're really going to have to get your elbows into this to get them ground up really, really nice and fine, like fine sand. That's about the nice fine crumb that you're looking for. So it's super soft and super light. That's going to give us a really nice, firm and deliciously buttery base. All right, with your cookie crumbs all nice and finely blitzed, you want to tip in all of your butter and then you're just going to stir that around until it resembles, it should look like quite wet sand. You know it's done when you can pick it up and kind of make an imprint of it and the imprint stays where it is. All right, now for the good bits, we're going to spoon it all into our removable base tart pan. It always looks like a lot of base, but I love a lot of base and it does squish down a lot. So you want to get in there and really compact it nicely. As I'm compacting, I'm also kind of forcing it up the sides of the pan. Because this one's quite deep, we actually need a little more base so that it can get all the way up to our top edge, which gives us a really nice look for our finished product. Once you're happy that that's pretty nicely compacted, you just want to press it down with the base of a glass or a jar to make sure it's really nice and firm on the bottom and on the sides. And then take a sharp knife and you just want to slice away from the pan towards the outside and just knock off any of those kind of ridgy edges. We want that really nice and smooth. Perfect. Now that one there can go off into the fridge until our cheesecake's ready to go in. Now it's time to make our cheesecake batter. So you want to grab your white chocolate, your cream and your cream cheese. I'm not going to put any sugar in this cheesecake mix because I've got the white chocolate and that's kind of sweet. And then the strawberries and the jello and everything. So we don't need as much sweetness in the actual cheesecake itself. So I'm going to take my white chocolate and I've got like 500 mils of cream. I'm just going to pour just a little bit over the top. So there's a little bit of something in there to melt it with. And then I'm going to pop that off into the microwave on 30 second intervals, stirring in between as I go until it's really nice and smooth. Now we're going to put our cream cheese into one bowl and we're going to whip that until it's super nice and soft and creamy. And the cream goes into another bowl and we're going to whip that until soft peaks form. When I talk about soft peaks in cream, this is what you're looking for. So as you actually lift it up, you can see it's lighter and it's fluffier, but it does fall really easily off the spatula and it leaves marks, but they kind of collapse after a little while. So it's certainly not stiff peaks. All right, so your cream cheese should be beautiful and smooth and your ganache should be silky and free of any lumps. Now you want to pour your white ganache straight in over your cream cheese mixture. I'm doing this because I don't want the hot white chocolate going into my cream. I'm going to let the cream cheese cool it down a little bit first. Mix those together until they're really well combined. All right, this is looking and smelling heavenly. I'm just going to put in my cream into the cream cheese mixture and I'm going to fold it through about half at a time. Folding through in big, loose sweeping motions. And that's going to add air and a little bit of stability to our cheesecake. And it's also going to make it beautiful and creamy and soft and fluffy and delicious. In goes the rest. So you can remove your base from the fridge and then we're just going to spoon that cheesecake mixture straight in. The good thing about refrigerating that tart shell initially is it sort of holds it all together a little bit so that as you're spreading this around, you're not dragging crumbs from the wall all the way through your nice white cheesecake. I'm just going to smooth it off as best as I can with my spatula, but again, being careful not to work that cream too hard. And then that's going to go back off into the fridge so it can start to set before we put on all of our strawberries and jelly and decorations. Now I like to grab a couple of bowls for this part because I kind of want to separate my strawberries. I kind of want to make my larger ones in one bowl and then my smaller ones in the other. 
slicing off as little as you can possibly get away with of your greenery and popping them to the side. Big strawberries in one bowl, small strawberries in the other. I'm also not going to wash these strawberries. If you like, you can wipe them off, but I don't wash the strawberries because as soon as you wash berries, they start to rot. So if you're particularly gonna serve this not until the next day or even two days later, washing those strawberries is gonna make them spoil a lot faster. All right, all of our strawberries are good to go and now it's time to make up your jelly. So I'm just gonna make it up as per manufacturer's directions. Mine tells me to do a cup of boiling water, stir until dissolved and then do a cup of cold. And if you've got really cold water or even a couple of cubes of ice, pop that in at this point because you want that to cool down really rapidly. All right, I'm gonna put my jelly into the fridge because by the time my strawberries are done on that tart, I'm gonna want this jelly to be cool. Cannot be any hotter than room temperature or else it's gonna melt our cheesecake underneath. Switch out your jelly for your cheesecake and it should be just starting to firm up. It's only been in there for about 15 minutes or so. And now I'm gonna line up strawberries right up against that outside edge and I'm gonna start with the biggest, fattest ones that I can find. So they're really large around the outside edge and they get smaller as we get to the middle. The tart is looking gorgeous. The jelly is cold but not set. So you cannot walk away from this. You can't leave it in the fridge because otherwise it will set and then it's not gonna work either. It has to be chilled and not said, it's a fine line. You've got about a 10 minute window. I'm gonna use a paper cup or a plastic cup so that I can distribute this jelly nice and evenly. So I'm just gonna pour that in all around my strawberries. And having this little cup means that I can really distribute it nicely without disturbing the cheesecake underneath. You may not use all of the jelly. It really depends on how tall your tart pan is, how big your strawberries were. But what you wanna do is you wanna mostly cover them and have a nice little red pool that they're swimming in. And then I'm actually gonna brush the very tops of them in a little bit of the remaining jelly. This will just add like a little bit of a shine and a gloss and it'll also help to protect the strawberries. If you've got a little jelly left and you've still got room in your tart pan, you can just leave that, refrigerate these for half an hour and then give them another coat. So that first coat of jelly sets and then you get another nice, lovely, shiny coat of jelly on top. That one's gonna go off into the fridge for three hours. So a minimum of three hours, longer if you have it, so that it's really nice and firm. To take your tart out of its pan, I find it easiest with these deep dish tart pans to actually sit it on a bowl that's slightly smaller than the size of the removable base. If it's giving you any resistance, rather than forcing it, I prefer to take a hairdryer and just gently heat the outside edges and then give it another try. You'll find it just melts that butter just enough to allow your tart to release. I don't recommend taking the cheesecake off the removable base. If you want to put it on a cake stand or a serving plate, put the whole base down and then serve it still on that removable base. No baked cheesecakes aren't quite as strong as the baked ones and you don't want to risk breaking any of that no bake crust. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's strawberry shortcake no bake cheesecake. This is amazing. It's great for summer, it's great for winter, it's great for autumn and spring. It's pretty much a year round winner. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do two new videos every week. And as always guys, thanks very much for watching.